Welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Uh, incredible week this week, really, really busy, trying to update the site and everything else. Um, I know some of you guys are having trouble with streaming videos. I think we're almost to the bottom of it. We've almost sussed the reasons why. Um, it's a pipeline issue, not so much uh, our end or our host end, it's somewhere in between. And it does seem to be the trouble that some of you are able to watch the videos in the new format on the new player and everything else absolutely fine and in others you're having trouble with it buffering and things like that so we're trying to find a sort of happy medium between the two uh, and everything else but the new player which some of you have seen it's our new one it's very much similar to youtube so you can fast forward pause go back and all the rest of it um, is better quality than youtube you know that's the thing the bit rate for youtube we've spoken about it a lot in the forum is only 2100 bits you know so obviously you're limited on the quality and the detail you can get down there for overall shots zoom in right in no problem when you do an overall shot you're trying to get a bench like we do here doesn't really work that well so you know that's why we use our own hosts we don't use free software and all bits and pieces like that um, but anyway it looks like we're to the bottom of it now and I'm hoping by the end of next week we should all be absolutely fine and moving through so some of these videos which have been hosted on, on YouTube will be cut off probably by the time you hear this and they'll all be on our own server now back on the own site and everything else but thanks for bearing with me um as i said i was doing 12 hour reports back to our host to say why it isn't working where it is and everything else but it would seem to be so different because some of you are having problems at certain times of the day um in certain areas of the world the australian guys had no problems and then they were heard and then the us guys and everybody it it seemed to affect everybody but hopefully now we are to the bottom of it as i said the new player might come online by the end of this week, maybe by early next week, uh, and then we'll see how it all pans out with that. But as I said, thank you for everyone sticking with us and everything else like that. As I said, we I've been really busy this week. I've been trying to get it all done before the um, UK Nationals for Telford. Um, we've got our new uh, basic modelling range, which I know I've had loads and loads of emails from you saying you're absolutely loving it. And I say a lot of you guys are you know professional model makers and things like that, and you're saying it's great to go back and watch it. And like I say, it's nice to go over techniques and to play and do things like that. And doing little tiny 172nd aircraft like this have been a lot of fun. I've got a pile of Spitfires over there. Um, they are all going up this week you've been seeing them a part of it has been going up every single week so i think it's about three hours gone up this week um and there's still more to come because we've still got to do the harriers uh and then we're going to be working through the basic painting uh basic airbrushing of using your airbrush that's all going to be upgraded and done as well by next week uh so hopefully by the time we've got telford which will be the week after that that will all be in place um i know a lot of you have been disappointed on facebook um it's been brought to my attention that um you feel a lot less left out guys we are a subscription site facebook is just a advert a window to come in if you want to see what we get up to come and join everybody else who's in there but it's not fair that i put areas free for non-members to see when you've got members who are paying for it so see from their point of view that they're paying for this you're not so sorry that's how it is anyway um i've got to speak about telford it's coming up very very rapidly um I'm trying to organise all our stock and our stand. For those of you who don't know, we've got a huge stand there this year. We've got an entire end with an 18-foot uh, table. So um, we've got uh, a lot of room to fill, quite frankly. Um, so what we're doing, we're opening it up to all the members. Obviously, you have to be a member. Um, if you want to display your models on our table, uh, which will be at Telford, uh, we're in Hall 2, up by the loose. Um, we're going to have plenty of room this year. That's what we're saying. So feel free to bring your models along. I spoke to Tony, uh, sorry Tony, Steve uh, at length earlier on this week and we sort of organised how it's going to do. If you want to bring your model for the day, for the entire weekend, perhaps just Saturday, perhaps just Sunday, please feel free. Come and speak to us in the forum first so we can get an idea of how many are going to come, obviously how much table space we're going to need and everything else like that. I don't think we're going to have a theme, a load of you have asked about are we going to have a theme for it. This is our first year of doing it, I just want to display the best of your work. So bring along the best of your work, I'm going to have nice little name cards done so you can just fill in your details so people can see what kit you've used obviously your name and various things like that which will go on there and then as I say our table should look very spectacular with all the models laid out on them as well for the world to see so if you are thinking of going you know perhaps you want to bring your model along as I said just bring it with you bring it over to our stand you can display it on our stand and then pick it up before you leave uh, the actual show venue or as I said you can bring it we will be setting up no doubt 
I should think Friday afternoon as usual. Um, so if you wanna put it down there and bring it along on uh, Friday afternoon, feel free and then obviously as long as you can all have them picked up and everything ready and gone by seven o'clock on sunday then we'll have no problems at all it should all be very good but we're really looking forward to it we've got as i said big things planned for the show as well and it should be a lot of fun so if you want to see your models bring them along we'd love to have them there um what else we got to speak about um we've got a couple of little bits here which we want to speak about if i just make some room First of all, Life Colour Paints. Um, I have to mention these. I had these sent to me um, by uh, the Airbrush Company. Uh, I haven't used them yet, so I don't know quite what they're like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little bit of a play with them this week just to see exactly how they go. Now, the great thing I like about these things is the colours that they're using. So this particular one here we've called uh, the War on the Road. Um, basically what you actually get is these colors so you've got dirt road color you've got uh, middle east um, asphalt or tarmac uh, and european tarmac because i said european tarmac doesn't be very black and say in other parts of the world it tends to have that color hue to it usual thing with all life color paints they come in their standard little pots and they all smell of emulsion paint all have quite a weird smell to them um, as I said I've never been a mass fan of life color paints until I learned how to use them which was something I discovered uh, a few years ago when one of the guys from life color talked me through about it as I said secret to life color paints is air pressure very very low and thin it with their own thinners don't try and use anybody else's thinners because they don't work as well okay so as I said what I'm going to do with I'm gonna have a go with these this week and I'm gonna have a go with a brush um, I'm going to go with an airbrush and see exactly what we can do with them. But these things here are great for weathering because the colours, we've all got the colour range and everything else. Sometimes you don't need the colours. But to do these colours that they've got here, like this one we've got here is streaking and staining. So you've actually got like a lime green, that sort of grimy green colour, dirty green, dirty brown. So yeah, that's staining, especially for you armour guys and uh, diorama guys. Great little effects like that. But this one really took my eye. This reminds me of my first flash. This is uh, leaks and stains. Okay, so what you've got down here is this dampness and everything else. So the colour is one you've got vegetable uh, origin damp green, vegetable origin damp yellow, and dark mould. Sounds like our weathering washes. But yeah, so should be a lot of fun. But also they are coming along now with, this is something, um, the reason they got into contact with me, obviously I did some IDF work recently. Uh, this is for the Israeli Defence Force Army uniform colours. So we've got the dark green, the mid green, and the light green as well. And you've got the nice little pictures on the side here that show it. So I'll have a bit of a play with these, see how we get on, and I'll report back to you. I'll do a little uh, review on them which you'll be able to watch on the site and I'll bring them up uh, next week. And we can talk about those in depth. So next up, next thing, we have this little beast. This is the 135 scale um, Hein 24. This is the E version. Now, um, I happen to have one of these about 40 minutes drive up the road. Yes, this one here is one that uh, myself and Steve went and had a look over and everything else. Um, as I said, really nice to see one of these things up close and personal. They are an absolute beast. And I've wanted to build these for absolute years, okay? So I think we're probably gonna need a little bit more room. And I think we're gonna have to put the cameras out a little bit to fit this little guy in. But as you can see, we've got here, this is the hind. 135th. Now it's not a new kit by a long shot. It's been around a little while, but the decals are done by Cartograph, so they're probably going to be okay. Nice couple of markings down here. You've got obviously this uh, Tiger Stripe one, as well as the sort of standard um, Russian 04 markings there. So in the box, you will find this and this is the reason for me doing this kit um, I'm gonna go completely to town with it we're gonna hopefully put some electronics in with this one some flashy lights and everything else like this and I'm not gonna have this one all opened up like I'm gonna do the intruder the intruder is gonna look like it's in deep maintenance with everything hanging out very similar to what I did to the F4 Phantom the Tamiya 132nd one many years ago this particular one is gonna be all tooled up as if it's ready just to take off okay that is my plan for this one so what I've done is I've gone out and got the big head set for it. Now this big head set is one of those ones where you get all the bits in here. Now to be honest, I've already had a, a mosey through, but I'll show you what you get in here. You get the mask set, which is fair enough. You can use them if you like. I'm not a mass fan of their masks. Okay, but what you do get is you've got the full color 
interior set down here, all right? So between that and this little one at the back, that pretty much gets around the problem of detailing the cockpit, of making it all nice and things like that. Next up we've got uh, is the armament set. So we've got things down here for the rails, the rocket pods, and all those areas like that. So the, hopefully that will get a lot of those bits sorted. And then obviously you've got the last bit, which is the external set. So we've got some plating here and a lot of hatch covers and things like that. And again, another little one at the back. There's not tons of it. It's not like you'd imagine with a kit this size that it's got absolute gowns and designs of it all in here. So if we just drop this top camera down just a little bit, what we can do is have a look through these. Now, as I said, don't think this is uh, a modern trumpeter kit with beautiful detailings and everything else like that. For you guys who haven't seen it, I've got the biggest studio that anyone I know has got, and I still haven't got enough room, always the way. But what you do get down here, you might be able to see, um, we've got medium um, recessed panel lining. As I said, when we were looking at the Intruder last week's review, if you've seen the Intruders one, you'll know I was quite a fan of their recessed detailing. The riveting was all perfect. It was all the same. This isn't. This is a little bit higgledy-piggledy the way it is. So what you've actually got is very deep, then it goes light. Some of the panel lining is a little bit wavy, shall we say. But the great thing is this is a big, heavy Russian helicopter. You can almost forgive things like that on it because it's probably like it in real life. But certainly, as you can see from the parts, it's all recessed panel lining. It is quite a large lump when you see it down like this. I don't know how close the side cam will get in to show you some of this detail, but you might be able to see some of these details, hopefully on the side as you come through. Uh, the particular version of this one is what they call the V, okay? There's loads of different versions, and to be honest, I have got around here somewhere a very nice book I just bought on the hind for my references for this one, and it talks in depth about all the little parts. But as you said, for an older kit, it's not too bad at all. Now, as I said, I'm not gonna go flinging through all through these bags, but needless to say, as you can probably see by just looking at these, you do get a very heavy parts count on this. And some of the cockpit details are a little bit basic, shall we say, on a kit of this size. There is a resin one available if you did want to go down that route, you know, that's personal choice. But as you can see, all the parts, we've got the little stubby wings here, so we'll have a look at those. But you can see we've got these nice little stubby wings on here where I intend to put some lights on and fit them in and everything else like that. It seems to be really nice. What you have got is a lot of raised detailings uh, on these panels and things like that, which you might be able to see in these. Well, the great thing about this is what it's like in real life. Pretty heavy on the molding, if you like, and need a little bit of catch up. We've got a lot of these areas are raised, pretty rough, pretty crude, which are obviously gonna take a little bit of work. Something a little bit different, here's your weapons fit for this one. So obviously we've got free fall bombs, which you don't expect with a helicopter, but yes, the Hind does carry it, as well as gun pods uh, and rocket pods. Pretty much generic set there. This is, one. this is your rotors set for it. So as you can see, you've got a lot of texture uh, going on with these rotors as you go right the way through them like that. You know, again, it's something where we'll be able to hopefully weather, give it that nice heavy look to it and go all the way in. But at the moment what I'm doing is I'm sort of collecting references, working out the electrics, how we're gonna have the electrics all fitted onto this one and everything else. That's a duplicate set for the rocket pods and gun pods as well. So it's a side of each of those. So you certainly get a large weapon fit for it. And again, more weapons, but in here we've also got the engines, the turbines, uh, and everything else like that, and the rails. Nice little box, which has our clear parts. So down in here, you can probably see we've got clear parts here. These are for the engine covers, because obviously it does have a full detailed engine, which with this kit, if you wanted to display it in the open form, you can show it just like that. So that's that one. Here's our front and rear canopies, or most of them. Um, obviously it's got doors, they're like car doors, and a hatch for the front pilot on there as well. They're not brilliant. I said it's showing its age a little bit, but they'll do. And there's the second part. Clear parts for the instrument panels. Obviously, we're going to sort of retrofit ours with color photo etch, but we will be using the dials on the inside and maybe sitting LED lighting in to light up those instruments as if it's all powered up. Okay, more photo etch, a little bit here. So we've got a little few things. We've got harnesses, things like that down here, some little grill covers. 
uh, pitot tubes, windscreen wipers, things like that, and we've got the film on the back. So, as I said, it's it's one of those funny helicopters. It looks like it's going to be a handful to go together, but realistically, I don't think it is. I think it's going to be pretty straightforward. So the instructions, if we just have a whiz through, um, as you can see, usual thing, we've got the parts call out all the way through. As we're going to go through, we just have a quick whip through. Um, seats, so we do have, there's actual harnesses that go on here. Personally, I think the harnesses look far too out of scale. They look too thin, too small. Okay, and then obviously we move through with the, the actual main cockpit area. So you've got a situation with the rear cargo one that moves through. I've got loads of reference shots on this and I might even take another trip up to the museum where our local hind is and do a little bit more research on it as well. So as you see, going through, starting work on these engines, I've seen guys do amazing work on these. They've gone and they've actually built hinds which are all up in deep maintenance and stuff like that. And to be honest, the one down in our museum is all opened up as well. So, you know, you can really make a, an amazing model out of these. And I must admit, I've drawn a lot of inspiration from other builds looking on the net where guys have really gone to town with it and done amazing jobs on this one. So there we go, as you see, it's all going in, all pretty straightforward. Pylons going on there, those little stubby wings. The main gear itself, again, there is aftermarket available. I think with a little bit of hosing, a little bit of wiring, things like that, we can liven this one up really to make quite a, dish, a difference on it. The gun for the front, and then obviously we've got the wells fitting in through the bottom, and then putting those main wheels in the back. And then usual thing with helicopters, you have this situation where it all sort of clamps around. Usual bits going on, as you can imagine, you've got covers on and off i think it probably it only shows them as covers off which you just know means it's going to be a handful to have them all closed up but with ours i don't know i, I quite fancy the idea of having it look like it's just about to lift off because that is my plan for it okay more stuff going in there we've got the coolers the intakes okay we've got the little fans for the inside of the crew which is a very nice touch putting all of that together and then all these myriad of little bits all going underneath it really bring it to life and then the rotor head again rotor heads on the helicopters uh, if you're watching the basic video builds and things like that we talk about detailing and livening things up and where your eyes taken classic example people always look at the top of rotor heads if you put all the lining in um, and then obviously all the hydraulic lines and things like that it really livens it up and it draws your eye to it okay and then the weapons fit so we're talking about obviously all these different bombs so we've got clusters you've got fuel tanks long-range fuel tanks which is a nice touch um, obviously guided missiles the guns the grenade launchers tow type missiles and then the weapons loadout and then last but no means least we have our call out sheet so as you can see lovely markings on this one to do it in the sort of tiger stripe and everything else like that for the check one or you can go straight in with the Russian one being 04 and then obviously you've got the colour call outs which looks like they're in federal standard so you might want to switch that slightly tweak it and the decal so let's have a look see what Cartograph came up with back then I can't remember exactly when this kit came out but I know it was a few years ago now not too bad at all they're a little bit thick I don't think these are Cartograph's standard beautiful markings that you sort of find now but certainly they will do the job because of its scale i think you might perhaps want to go down the lines of getting a detail sheet for it linden hill people like that do some great aftermarket stuff for this particular kit as well so there we go now you've seen it because i know lots of you have asked about it this is our next project up literally i am finishing off the basic modeling range and the basic airbrushing range over the next week and then I will be starting on both of these big kits which are going to be my big push through Christmas uh, and over Christmas to the new year as well as continuing with the Wasp. To be honest I've done so much work recently on the basic videos and trying to get all of that side of the site developed and everything else that I haven't managed to get the next part fully done of the Wasp yet. I've got about 20 minutes in the can just need to get another bit recorded on that one to get the next part up but that will be the next part of that will be up next week and then as I said as soon as we come back from Telford first week back in we're going to be on with the intruder the black widow 2 which we saw last week i am going to be building as well that's going to be an in-flight display because obviously it's something i'd like to get my teeth into as well whilst we're on about getting our teeth into things there's plenty of you guys to get your teeth into at the moment on the back of an envelope here we've got the carrier born sig is going to finish on the 17th of november so you've got what three weeks to get on with that one 
push through with that one guys some great entries obviously we do the end video for it and all the bits that go with it we'll probably have a look at those next week as well the modern armored uh, vehicle sig is going to finish on the 24th of november uh that's steve and bob leading that one so some great work going on in there again we'll have a look about that next week i think uh, and then we've got the two that are starting. A lot of you have asked about it. Obviously, the Fokker Wolf, uh, I think some of you thought was going to get side bust. It won't at all. It is going to happen on the 23rd of November and is led by Jonas, and I'll help him out with that one as well. As well as on the 1st of November, massive, massive thing on the forum about it now. Um, it's the obviously the stars of the silver screen SIG all your favorite things from films and uh, just to recap i think i've answered most questions on it now but it can be anything you like as long as it was in a film in some form of starring role so if it was in a scene uh, from start to finish that is a starring role as far as i call it what i mean it's not is when it's a bus driving around in the background they're supporting actors we might have a show for a sig or a group build for them in a few years time or something but for the moment this one is just for the stars of it so for instance um I was asked about using the A10s from the Terminator films, okay? Because obviously they're in it, but they're only in it for a full scene. But I think it's because it's in a full scene, that's no problem at all. I've been also about the A10s from um, Transformers films. Yeah, they can do that, but early scene, um, no problem if they want to go in because obviously it, they are covering a full scene. It's not like it's a passing shot, so no problem with them. You can do figures, no problem with that at all. A lot of people have asked, can you do figures? You can do anything you like. Um, you know, as long as it is in a big part of a chunk of a film, then no problem at all. So you can just crack on with that one. And obviously that's 1st of November and it's gonna run until May as well. So no problem with that. So that's about it for this week. Sorry, it's a little bit short and sweet, but to be honest, I've run out of time with everything that's going on. You will see big changes on the basic um, modeling video area in the tutorials it's all gonna go hopefully fingers crossed <laughs> it's all gonna go sort of dynamic so you'll be able to click on the links that will take you to expanded areas on rescribing expanded areas on filling expanded areas on as well as watching the videos but I've got to get that all sort of sorted out but you will see the links in the descriptions for it so you can watch part two for instance which you know talks about basic modeling and you might think right I want to know a little bit more about the actual um, filling and then you you can go to another part which is a standalone just on filling it's like a 30 minute video just on that you might want to know about rescribing standard thing about rescribing and then so forth so on some of it's old at the moment some of it's ultra new that you haven't seen yet so what i'll be doing is replacing them all anyway up to the new video standard of three cameras full hd as you know basic airbrushing a lot of you said about that one will be following right on its tail that is the next one through i'm pushing through with that hence whilst all these kits are done and you can see things like these collections of spitfires and primers and things like that because obviously these are going to be used for showing about airbrushing and things like that so they will start next week be on with those and then what happen is next week they will rattle up behind each other like we've done this week so every single day you've had something to watch on the site and to go right the way through so that's about it for this week i'm now going to go off and do more editing because that's what i seem to be doing now every night loads and loads of editing to get it all up onto the site to you guys until next week everybody happy modeling and take care